So in the last video we were talking about passive transport versus active, right? So the experiments you're going to be running for this lab are all passive. You're going to start with diffusion. So the first thing I want to talk about is our diffusion procedure. So for diffusion, we are talking about the movement of a molecule from a high concentration of that molecule to a lower concentration of that molecule, like in this wine glass with the drops of red dye that we looked at in the last video. So in lab you are going to set up a mimicked dialysis tubing bag to represent the cell and you are going to use two solutions. You are going to use a starch solution which is water with starch dissolved in it and then you're going to use an iodine solution which again is going to be water with iodine dissolved into it. So when you set this up you are going to be making a bag uh, made of this plastic dialysis tubing. The tubing remember has little holes in it that are going to mimic a plasma membrane but can't be exactly like a plasma membrane because it's not alive. Uh, but the pores are going to be able to differentiate between the size of the molecules that are moving around it. So in this picture, right, they're using a protein instead of starch, but you can think about that as starch. So the starch is going to start inside of the bag, and on the outside of the bag, you're going to put the iodine solution. And you're going to let this sit for about 30 minutes, and you're going to determine which molecule was the one that actually moved. So iodine, again, is going to start outside, and then starch is going to start inside. So remember from labs of past, when starch and iodine meet, it turns purple or black, again, depending on how much starch and how much iodine you are using. So what we're looking for in this experiment is where the color changes to a purple. So does the inside of the bag turn purple? Does the outside in the beaker turn purple? Uh, or does everything turn purple? And this is going to help you to decide which molecules were small enough to actually fit through the bag. So was iodine small enough to move from outside the bag inside to cause a purple color? Was starch small enough to move from outside to in, or from inside to outside? Right, was it small enough to move through the pore? Or did both of them move through, meaning that we had kind of a, a willy-nilly everything turns purple uh, kind of experience. So you can conclude which one of the molecules is actually small enough to fit through the pores. So again, remember that the dialysis tubing cannot differentiate between charge the way a plasma membrane can, but it can differentiate molecules based upon size. So the other passive transport you are going to be working with in this lab is the passive transport of water. So osmosis is the diffusion of water. Simply put, anyway, it is the movement of water down its concentration gradient. So when we look at the movement of water from a high concentration of water to a lower concentration of water, we have osmosis. Now, of course, the challenge with this is that most of the time when we're talking about living things, we do not think about concentrations in cells, for example, as the amount of water that's present. We are actually more worried about the solute that is inside of the water, right? So water being the solvent here and then the solute being the uh, molecule that we're looking at. So osmosis is driven by how much water is present, but the way that we usually think about this is how the solute is, like where the solute is higher versus lower. So water will move down its concentration gradient um, to even out the solute. So another way that we can look at this is that water will move from a low solute concentration to a higher solute concentration. Right? So the semi-permeable membrane, which will be, we will be using um, uh, the dialysis tubing to mimic, in this image is represented by the red dashed line. Okay, so we have a situation on the left here where we have water, which is kind of the pinkish color fluid, and then the little purple circles, which are representing the solute. So what you can see here is that uh, in the way that this is set up, there's a high amount of water on the left side, but a lower amount of solute. There are fewer little purple circles. 
Now on the other side, you have a high amount of purple circles. The solute level is very high, which means the concentration of water is a little bit lower. So if we let this sit for a water a little while, what would happen is water would try to equal this out. Because the solute, the little purple circles, cannot move through this membrane, the solutes can't move. But the water can. The water can th move through this membrane. Right? So as water moves, this is going to equal out the concentration of solute. Um, so the solute concentration, the solute circles over here, are spreading apart to equal the amount of distance as it is on the other side. So water moved from a high concentration of water to a lower concentration of water. And you can look at it from the solute's point of view. It moved from a low solute concentration to a high solute concentration. So again, it sounds like I'm saying two different things. I'm not. I'm literally saying and describing the same thing, but it's looking at it from two points of view. Whether you are looking at it from the water's point of view or you are looking at it from the solute's point of view. Right? Water will always move from a high concentration of itself to a lower concentration of itself, but that is driven by how the many solutes are actually in the solution. Right? The solutes will change how the water is going to be moving. So in the experiment that you're going to be doing, you are going to be looking at what is called tonicity. Tonicity is going to be the relationship between the cell and the world around it, right? The environment that it's actually put into. So as an anatomist, <laughs> I always think about this uh, from the standpoint of a human cell getting put into a concentration of something, right? So um, oftentimes our blood chemistry will change based upon what we eat and drink. Um, so we will have different environments that our cells are going to be um, put into. So there are three major ways that this can happen, right? So we can talk about what the cell has in it versus what it has on the outside. So hypotonic. So remember, hypo means low. So if you have a hypotonic solution, that means the solutes are lower than on the outside of the cell versus the inside of the cell. So a hypotonic solution is going to have less solutes on the outside than the cell actually has. So what this will cause is the water to move into the cell, right? So again, remember the water is going to be flowing to equal out the concentration. So if there is more solute inside the cell, water will move into the cell. The other option is what we call isotonic. So an isotonic solution is going to be when everything is equal, um, what we call osmotic pressure. The amount of water is equal on the inside and outside. We have the same amount of solutes on the inside and the outside. This means the cell does not change. Water can still move, right? Water is always moving. Diffusion is basically always happening, um, but the water is going to move in and out at kind of an equal rate. Now the third environment is hypertonic. So a hypertonic environment is going to be a high level of solutes. So hyper means high, right? So a hypertonic solution means that there are more solutes outside of the cell versus inside the cell. So if we are looking at a hypertonic solution in comparison to a cell being put into it, uh, then there are more solutes outside than inside. Now again, remember water is going to be moving towards the higher solute. So in this case, the water is going to move from the higher concentration of water to the lower concentration of water, which means the water is going to move out of the cell. Water will leave the cell, and that means that the cell is going to shrivel up. Now, it may potentially die in that case as well. Um, so it depends on what type of cell we are talking about. So again, as I said, um, I think about this from the human standpoint because I'm the human anatomist. Um, so this is actually a picture of human red blood cells being put into these different environments. So the cells themselves are the same. Right? The cells have the same concentration of solutes inside of them in all of these pictures. 
and then they are put into a different situation. All right, so a hypotonic solution is over here on the right. With a hypotonic solution, water is rushing into the cell, which means the cells, the human cells, will burst, right? They will swell up and potentially blow up, which is what lice means. Isotonic, they'll stay about the same. Again, remember water will always be moving, but it will move in at an equal rate that it's moving out. And then the hypertonic solution means that there is more solute, oftentimes salt is what we think about, on the outside of the cell than on the inside, so then the water is going to leave. This will cause our cells to shrivel up and again could potentially kill them. Now this is different than what might potentially happen in plants, which is another experiment that you're going to be running in this lab. So let's look at the first experiment, which is going to be setting up dialysis bags to represent these different environments. So you're going to put this under four different environments. Uh, this is going to take about an hour to run, so make sure you get this set up pretty quickly and start uh, keeping track of what's happening. So you're going to fill the bags with uh, different solutions, and then you're going to put them into different environments. So you are going to be filling the bags, tying them off, and weighing them. So these should be bags, should be weighed when they have been dried off um, and when everything's sealed up and then dried off. And then you're going to be measuring them every 15 minutes to see what happens to the weight. So does water go into the cell? Does water come out of the cell? Now in order to mimic this, you are going to be using sugar solutions. So I will tell you, this lab gets really sticky. Um, so as you are going through the lab, please clean up after yourself. And then when you're done, you're going to wipe down everything because the last thing I need is ants in the lab. So then what you will do after this, so I'll walk through the experiment in a second, the last, so you'll notice in the lab procedure 6.2 is the experiment and then 6.3 is the graph of this. So your graph is going to involve a line for every single bag. So you're going to be making four bags here. You're going to make four lines that are going to be set up with the weight, which is our dependent variable we're going to be measuring in this experiment, um, with time on the bottom. Now we're using time on our x-axis even though time is a standardized variable because we are comparing four different bags that are in four different environments, which is our independent variable. So you will have four lines here that will represent what happens to the weight of the bag over the course of the experiment. So in this experiment, you're going to have two beakers. Beaker A, as you can see in this picture, which is also the one from your lab book, is going to have 25% sugar, sucrose, and the other one is going to just have a 1% sugar solution. So A has a stronger sugar solution than B will. Then you're going to make four bags, again, which you can see here. Both a, bags A and B are going to have a 1% sugar solution, which will go into um, both beakers. So beaker A will have bag A in it, and then beaker B will get bag B, uh, and it will get two other bags that have a 10% sugar solution and a 25% sugar solution. So over the course of the time that you have here, you're going to have an hour, you're going to weigh them, you're going to pull them in and out of the solution every 15 minutes, you're going to wipe them off and weigh them, and you are going to measure the grams to determine which bags are losing weight and which ones are gaining weight. Um, and this is going to um, help you to decide which beakers are or which beakers, which bags are in a beaker that is hypertonic or hypotonic um, based upon what the weight changes are. And one of the interesting things you're actually going to see with this experiment is that um, in a situation with bag C and D, so if you look at bag C, it has 10% sugar in it, right, as where bag D has 25% sugar, but they're both in the same solution. So this sets up a different concentration gradient. So remember the concentration gradient is the difference between what's inside and what's outside, right? So we have 25 to 1 with bag D and 10 to 1 with bag C. So there is a different concentration gradient. And remember I said earlier, um, the larger the concentration gradient, the faster the change. Um, so as you watch these bags, you will see one of them change faster because it has a higher concentration gradient.